是泰英 Wiki Data to English Wikipedia Experience and Proposal 维基数据与维基百科的整合建议与经验分享。让我们欢迎江浙 Jeremy。Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to begin this presentation by thanking the two organisations responsible for organising this conference. It's an international effort involving both Taiwan and Germany. And I thought I'd make that point at the outset because I have a long-standing connection with Germany and with the German language. And that's part of the background to my views on tying Wikipedia in English more closely with Wikidata. So I'll begin with a little outline of my... Oops. There we go. Begin with a little outline. So I'm going to begin by talking about a little bit some of my background, why I'm interested in this topic and in improving the ties between the two projects. I'm then going to talk about my beginnings in interacting with Wikimedia, media, which began in 2009, and specifically my early contributions and discoveries. I'll then talk briefly about my early experience with Wikidata, and then continue to the really important part of this topic, which is my work on and discoveries about and improving the ties between Wikidata and English Wikipedia. And finally, I'll make some suggestions as to how to improve the ties between those two projects. Oh, I'm going backwards. There we go. So, some brief information about me. <coughs> I'm Jeremy Ludlow. My username is Barnfriend, which is a made-up word. If you can speak German, you will be able to understand a little bit about where it comes from. The word B-A-H-N, Bahn, is German for railway. More specifically, the word uh, Eisenbahn is, means iron road. The word friend, F-R-E-N-D, -E -E is a made-up word which is a combination of the English language word friend with an I and the German language wor word Freund with an E-U. And the expression Eisenbahn Freund in German means railway enthusiast. So what the uh, username alludes to is my interest in railways and in German language. Uh, I've been an editor of English Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons since the end of 2009 and of Wikidata since soon after it was created at the end of 20, uh, 2012. I've made about 76,000 Wikimedia Commons edits. A lot of those re uh, relate to the creation of new categories. When I upload pictures, and I've uploaded more than 10,000 of my own pictures to Commons, I often create lots of new categories so I can properly categorise the images. I've done lots of Wikipedia edits as well, including about a thousand new articles, many of them translations from other Wikipedia articles in other languages, especially German, but also uh, languages from various other parts of the world, which I translate using Google Translate. And I've done a few Wiki Wikidata edits as well. A lot of those have been Wikibot edits uh, prompted by edits I've made to Wikipedia. So, for example, if I create a new article about a topic in English Wikipedia and it's not already covered by an article in another language, Wikidata will automatically create a new item and then tell me about two days later, ha, ah, we've created a new item. So I can claim credit for that even though it's not really uh, a manual edit. Some more information about where I come from. I'm from Australia. I was born in the mid-1960s, so I'm a fair bit older than the other pre presenters who've presented so far. And I w live in Perth, the capital city of Western Australia, which is the red dot on the west coast there. Western Australia is the largest of Australia's states. We like to think of it as being a bit like a lion's head looking west, and the east coast of Australia is a bit like a rabbit's face looking southeast. I know that white rabbits are very prestigious in Chinese culture, not quite so in Australia, but anyway, that gives you some idea of how we see ourselves. To give you an idea of scale, you can see, if I use my pointer here, this little island, a heart-shaped island on the southeast corner of Australia, that's Tasmania, Australia's smallest state. That's about twice the size of Taiwan. 
And if you bear that in mind, you can realise just how large my home state is. It's enormous. Um, to give you some more idea of scale, if we want to move now, say, to European scale, you can fit most of Europe in from between Spain and Portugal there to Scandinavia and uh, Poland over here. Uh, the distance between Perth and the south coast is about 450 kilometres, which is similar to Amsterdam to Paris, or if you like, a little bit less than from Frankfurt to Berlin. Uh, if you want to go from Perth to Sydney, which is on the east... Whoops, oh, sorry, I must have turned it off. Ooh, what have we done here? We've lost my... Oh, there we are back. Um, if you want to go from Perth to Sydney, which is on the east coast, roughly there, that's about the same distance as between London in the UK and Central Africa. So Australia is a very big place. We have a different concept of distance from most other people, and we Western Australians are extremely isolated and have a different concept. Again, uh, Australia as a whole is roughly the same size as the continental USA, minus, that's the USA minus Alaska and Hawaii, or the same size as Brazil if you want to look at South America. So that's part of the background that I come from when I'm approaching uh, Wikipedia and Wikimedia projects and Wikidata and what I think should be the ties between them. I think it's important when you're a very isolated person as I am normally, living as where I do, uh, to, to, to make the ties better and make them closer and integrate the whole system of projects in a, in a more effective way. So my first encounters with other places in the world began when I was about 10 years old. My father had what we call long service leave in Australia. If you work in Australia for the same employer for a set period of time, ranging from seven years to 10 years, you get three months long service leave. And by the mid-1970s, my father had accumulated six months. He'd never been outside Australia, so he took my mother and me and my siblings on a trip to Europe. We flew there with Singapore Airlines. My first ever flight was in a 707. These two photographs come from Wikimedia Commons. I haven't taken them myself. myself. Then we switched to a 747, which you can see on the right side. And uh, I can tell you a little story about that 747. It was one of six similar aircraft in Singapore Airlines fleet at the time. I don't know whether I flew on that particular aircraft, but it's now at Stockholm Airport in Sweden where it's been transformed into a hostel. And after I went to Wikimania in Stockholm in 2019, I went and had a coffee aboard that aircraft and then went for a wing walk. So um, you can have some fun experiences with things that you've experienced many years earlier. Now, once we reached the UK, um, I started taking photographs with a, new, a brand new Instamatic camera I'd been given for the trip. And these two photographs were taken with the very first roll of film I ever had in my first camera. And I've since uploaded them to Commons. And you can learn very quickly how to take a decent photograph. The one on the left was taken at London Zoo and you can see there's a shadow in the foreground. That's me, the photographer. I didn't know at the time you're not supposed to let your shadows impinge upon the photographs. By the time I took the second photograph, which is of a palace in, uh, in London called Hampton Court Palace, it's owned by the British Royal Family, I had a better idea of how to take a photograph with a very simple camera. And even old photographs taken with very simple cameras can look really good on commons. When we were in Europe, we also went on to the continent. And that was where I became familiar with Germany. Those of you who know a little bit about Germany will probably recognise the building in the left-hand side picture. That's also from Commons, and it's not one of mine. It's a fairly recent one. Uh, it's Neuschwanstein Castle in southern Bavaria. We travelled into Germany along the Rhine River up to Switzerland and crossed the border between Switzerland, Germany and Austria a few times. So I got familiar with that part of the world. The other photograph was taken with my camera by my father, and it features the rest of us at the exit to a, an old salt mine which had been converted into a tourist attraction. So I got to, to know a fair bit about Central Europe at the time. I'm the one in the red suit in the middle. We were given, this is not cosplay by the way, we were given the suits to protect us from the salt inside the mine. In those days the suits were brightly coloured and they were good at protecting you. I've seen more recent pictures from the 21st century and they're now a fairly unexciting cream colour. So you could say that life in the 1970s was a bit more colourful than it is today. And we flew back to Australia aboard another 747 and again I've uploaded that picture which is one of mine 
to show you again what life was like when I was a young person, long before I heard anything at all about Wikimedia and about the projects. But you can see that uh, my interests were in technology and taking photographs and so on. The camera I used is very similar to the one you see in the other picture, which is from Commons. It was a Kodak Instamatic, fully mechanical, didn't have any electrics or any electronics, no battery. Uh, the shutter operated mechanically. You couldn't focus it, it was fixed focus. Only two settings for s speed and so on. So it was very simple technology. I grew up with very simple technology. And I like simplicity, I like things to be done in an efficient way and that's part of my approach to Wikimedia projects as well. After I came home from that trip, I started at high school, beginning of 1979. In Australia, we run now a school year from February through to November or December. And the two important things I came to encounter at high school, relevant to what I want to talk about today, are uh, illustrated here. On the left-hand side is a, a mashup of European flags of nations that speak German as a major language, you know, Germany, Austria and Switzerland in the middle. Now, I learned to speak German. It was an option. Uh, those of you who live in places like Taiwan or Germany would find this very strange, but for Australian-born people in the 1970s and 1980s, you could actually go through 12 years of school and not learn a single word of a foreign language. We, we were able to learn only English. We didn't have to learn a foreign language at all. And that's, again, part of the background to the issues that I address uh, in this presentation. Um, a lot of people who contribute mainly to English Wikipedia are monolingual, they speak only English, and they don't really have a full appreciation of the benefits of operating the whole system in a way that reflects the multilingual nature of the world as a whole. And that's something that you need to bear in mind when you're talking about issues such as ties between English Wikipedia and Wikidata. The other photograph depicts a 1970s version of a desktop computer it was built by Wang Technologies and I was lucky enough at school to be able to use a computer just like this one. It was the first one to be purchased by a school in my state uh, to which students had access. It was acquired mainly for administrative purposes. They used it to help run the school but a small number of us were fortunate enough to be able to uh, form a computer club and get involved in programming it. Now the computer was made by a company called Wang Technologies Dr. Wang was a mainland Chinese computer engineer who completed his bachelor's degree in China and then uh, obtained a, a doctorate at Harvard. He remained in the United States and set up his company and by the 1970s it was one of the world's leading manufacturers of desktop computers. This is what uh, the Wang computers looked like. You can see it's an integrated machine. It's very basic. It has a cathode ray uh, monitor. It uses a cassette tape mechanism as a uh, storer of data. Uh, there were no such things as USB sticks or C, uh, uh, SD cards or, or even floppy disks back then. We used cassette tapes. And then there was an integrated keyboard. And the amount of memory it had was measured in kilobytes rather than megabytes or gigabytes. You actually need a lot more memory to uh, display that photograph than you were able to store inside the computer. That's how basic it was. And talking about basic, the language we used was called basic language. Some of you may have heard of it. It's actually really easy to learn. And an example of it, is again taken from Wikimedia Commons, is on the left. Uh, and you can see you've got three numbered paragraphs, numbered 10, 20 and 30. We used multiples of 10 so that if we wanted to add new paragraphs it would be easy to do that without renumbering the existing paragraphs. And so what it says is for a variable listed from 1 to 10, print hello Wikipedia. And then it says next, and then you run the program and there's the hello Wikipedia. That's how simple it was. Just about anyone could uh, learn it and do their own programming. We used to use it mainly to write and then play games. We were both game developers and game, game players. That's what we did in the, the end of the 1970s and early 1980s. And the photograph on the right is an example of another computer that we used at the time, very simple. So I left school in 1983 and spent some more time in Germany. And uh, here's a photograph showing uh, 
an interesting what they call Fachwerk house or half timbered house in uh, the city where I lived for three months and became more familiar with the, uh, the type of uh, life away from my terribly isolated city, the most isolated continental city in the world. Uh, it's called Melsungen and that's what they call the Rathaus, the, uh, the town hall. It's unusual because it doesn't have a back wall. It, it faces, it's in the middle of the town square in Melsungen and so all of the walls face outwards towards the town square. And there's actually an article about it in German Wikipedia but I haven't got to translate it yet. But that photograph I took much more recently when I went back there to pay the visit. And while I was on that trip, I became interested in some more German technology. In those days they had two Germanys. There was West Germany on the left and East Germany on the right. I used to take lots of train rides with the high-speed electric trains and then went to Berlin and encountered some rather different technology from East Germany called a Trabant car you can see there. I came back to Australia and studied at the University of Western Australia for five years and I completed a law degree and I've been a lawyer ever since I started practicing law in 1990. But I did a bit more traveling including photographing trains and to give you some idea of the diversity of the places I went to the photograph on the left was taken in West Africa in the Sahara Desert and the one on the right was taken in Nevada in the United States. I'd long had a hankering to travel across America and so I bought an Amtrak pass I flew with Malaysia Airlines to London and then Virgin to Newark, New Jersey and I spent five weeks travelling across America. And that led to my first visit ever to Taipei. The flight I had to take back from Los Angeles to uh, Kuala Lumpur had to refuel somewhere and some days of the week it refuelled in Tokyo, others here and so I paid my first visit and I have memories of wandering around the city and enjoying its sights. So that gives you the background to uh, my interest in Wikimedia projects. I'm interested in travel, in photography, in languages and translation, and particularly in, the, in relation to the languages part and the translation part, my interests are somewhat different from most people who speak English as a first language. And I'm interested in computer programming and in the subjects that I studied formally at university. So let's turn now to how I, I became involved in Wikimedia projects and how my interests affect my involvement. And it began in 2009. For a number of years I'd been seeing on Google searches pages on a project called Wikipedia and wondering what they were. I soon found out that you could edit them yourself and occasionally I used to do minor edits to correct typographical errors and the like. And then I found out that there were some articles on Wikipedia about trains, specifically about trains in the German speaking part of Europe. And one of them that caught my eye was the article about the Brig Zermatt railway line, BVZ as it was called. And you can see the version of it from 2009, which is just before I started editing it, is very short. It's only about four paragraphs long. I found that there was a German language version of the article and I decided to translate it. It took me a while because I hadn't done any translation for about 15 years, but I came up with the translated version and the current style of it you can see on the right hand side. So my beginnings with Wikipedia involved translating articles from one language to another. I also started creating new articles that were similarly translated. There's a special railway in Switzerland called the uh, Ration Railway in the uh, Albula and Benina landscapes. It's World Heritage listed. And when I started editing Wikipedia, English Wikipedia in 2009, there was no uh, there was no English language article about either of those railways. So I created them and the creations were by translation. You can see the current versions of them there. Now when I was doing this early work at the end of 2009, beginning of 2010, I made a few discoveries that affect my attitude towards how it's best to run Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects. Uh, first of all, you can have problems if you upload images to an individual Wikipedia. In my early days of translating articles from German into English about Swiss railways, I wanted to use the photographs that illustrated the German articles as illustrations for the English articles. 
and I found that some of those photographs had been uploaded to German Wikipedia and I just couldn't get them to work. And the reason was that you couldn't transclude, that's the word we use, you couldn't transclude the images from German Wikipedia directly to English Wikipedia, that just didn't operate. And the way to address that problem was to transfer the image to a central repository that I found out about. It took me a little while to work out how to fix the problem. But the central repository was, of course, Wikimedia Commons. And once you had the image on Commons, it could be translated to both Wikipedias and also a Wikipedia in any other language. And that problem has now gone because we've been using Commons for many years since. Uh, and so most of the images that were a problem for that reason are now on Commons. And nowadays almost all free images uploaded to Wikimedia projects are uploaded directly to Commons. If you try to upload one of those images now to English Wikipedia, they won't allow you to do it. The photograph you can see there is one of the photographs that caused me this problem. It was on German Wikipedia. It's actually the first photograph I ever transferred from German Wikipedia to Commons and also the first I uploaded to Commons. So that's my, the first of my many Commons images, although it wasn't taken by me. I also made another interesting discovery. It was to do with interwiki inter links. Links between individual language Wikipedias, largely, but also other Wikimedia projects. Now, as an example of what the interwiki links looked like in 2009, you can see on the left-hand side the interwiki links on the BVZ article as it appeared immediately before I started translating it. So it's a list of the names of articles in five other languages. There are articles in six languages about that railway. And from top to bottom they are Czech, German, French, Italian and Dutch. And if you put that into the code for the article, there would be a, a series of links the lower left hand side of the page. You'd be able to click on, those, on the, one of those links and go straight through to an article in another language. But that wasn't a terribly efficient way to link articles. Take, for example, what happened when you created a new article in, a, say, a seventh language about this topic. Every one of the existing six articles would have to have a new link added to it. That was often done by a bot, but it was still a very tedious process. And another problem arose if the name of one of the six articles that existed was changed. What would happen then is that the interwiki links on every one of the five other articles would have to be amended. Again, usually by a bot, but a tedious process, not really very efficient. Another problem again is that sometimes you'd have two groups of articles about the same topic that were linked with each other, but the two groups of articles were not linked. I remember on one occasion I found some articles, there were articles in three different languages, one of them was French, another was Italian, they were linked together about one subject, and then there was another group of articles about the same subject, one was in German, one was in English, and there were two other languages. They were linked to each other, but the two linked groups of articles were not linked as a whole. So you couldn't find all of the articles in one hit. It was a huge problem. Well, the solution to that particular problem, I, I mentioned that the solution to the problem with the images was Wikimedia Commons. The solution to that problem, the interwiki links problem, was Wikidata, which was established I think it was 11 years ago today, in 2012. What Wikidata did was link almost all into Wikilinks by moving them, moving them from the Wikipedia articles to the Wikidata. This is an example from the Wikidata of today of the equivalent of the into Wikilink list I showed you a moment ago. So you can see here, this is from the Wikidata, Wikidata item, and there are now, I think it's 10 articles. And the way it works now is that all of the links are on data, and they're all transcluded to the individual articles. Every time a new article is created, it just needs to be added to data, and the software does the rest. Every time an article is moved, the same thing happens. It's all so much more efficient. It all operates so much better. And so, in the very early days of Wikidata, I found out how useful it was. Um, you can still put into Wikilinks onto an article in Wiki Wikipedia if you want to for limited purposes, but by and large you don't need them anymore. It's all done for you by Wikidata, all done automatically. 
Well, in the first seven years or so of Wikidata, I didn't have much to do with it. I noticed that the interwikilink problem was solved, and I also made some Wikidata edits to assist with that solution. I mentioned earlier there was a problem when you had a group of three different languages linked and a group of four different languages linked, but they weren't linked to each other. The easy way to solve that problem is to merge the two Wikidata items, and I did that. Also, from 2012 on, whenever I created a new Wikipedia article, it would be linked with Wikidata, often automatically. But I didn't really understand how important Wikidata was and how interested people were in developing it until 2019 when I went to Wikimania in Stockholm, in Sweden. And only then did I realise just how many people were fascinated by Wikidata. There were lots and lots of them at that conference. And that alerted me to the true importance and usefulness of Wikidata. And ever since then, I've been bearing Wikidata in mind when I've been editing other Wikimedia projects. Now, by 2019, I'd become involved in ESIAP, the group of uh, Wikipedia and Wikim other Wikimania, Wikimedia groups uh, who are interested in or based in this part of the world, East Asia, Southeast Asia and the Pacific. And I'd started focusing particular attention on editing articles about East Timor. And in the course of that, bearing in mind what I'd learned in Stockholm, I decided to set up uh, a new template on, Wiki, on English Wikipedia, and you can see the top of the template on the left-hand side there. It's called TL Wikidata. TL stands for Timor-Leste, which is the Portuguese expression for East Timor. Now, that's a derivative of a template called PH Wikidata, Philippines Wikidata, which was created by Butch Bostria, uh, an ESIAP personality, who was a major the head of the organising committee for the recent Wikimania in Singapore. And Butch very kindly helped me iron out some bugs on that, on that template. And I now use it when I'm updating or improving articles on East Timorese settlements to transclude data directly into the info boxes. Now here's an example of one of those articles, it's about Atauro, which is an island just off the north coast of mainland East Timor. It's, one of the, it's now one of the municipalities of East Timor as well as being an island. On the left hand side you can see the article with the info box on the right. So you've got standard type of info box for settlements, info box settlements as used on English Wikipedia. On the right hand side you can see certain instances where I, instead of edit, entering the material straight away, whoops, I've used the template. So TL wiki data for population total, population as at particular date. That information is all numbers. It's multilingual. You can draw it from Wikidata. It's census material which has been entered into, directly into Wikidata. You don't need to enter it into any Wikipedia. You can just transclude it. So that's what I do. Similarly, with information about the time zone, about the offset from UTC, uh, about demographic titles and so on, this is all using the template. It's not recorded directly on the page, it's all transcluded from the Wikidata item. And that's consistent with the view I've held since I became more interested in Wikidata at Wikimania 2019. I now think of Wikipedia in any language as being a bit of a, a playground for people who like to write stories about things who like to, to be encyclopedic. And as Wikidata as being a storehouse for the data. And you can have the most efficient way to run your whole system is to have the playground for story, story tellers be for the storytellers and you get your data transcluded from the data repository. And then the data is available for use elsewhere. It can be used, particularly if it's in numbers, very easily in other language Wikipedias. It can be transcluded and used in other projects such as the OpenStreetMap or in the project we heard about earlier this afternoon. All of the data is where it should be in Wikidata. That's where, that's where you should keep it in order to run the whole system the most efficiently. Now I've also discovered a few other things that can transclude in a similarly efficient way if you use them the right way. An example is the commons category link that you often find, not always, but usually find at the base of an English Wikipedia article. There'll be a heading that reads external links and then there'll be a link 
made by a template, and those templates include the Commons Cat Inline template that you can see on this page. Now, in, 20, in 2009, if you use that template the way it's seen there at the top left-hand corner of the slide, uh, in that form, it would link the article with any Commons category bearing the same name as the English Wikipedia article. If you wanted to link the English Wikipedia article with a Commons category that had a different name, you could use the piped link. And you could also use a second piped link to display on the Wikipedia page some different text. But it was all focused on linking directly with Commons. That's the way it worked. In 2023, it operates differently because it, uses, it can use Wikidata. If you just uh, type it in as Commons Cat in line with the curly brackets and no piping, it will use the template to link the category assigned to the corresponding Wikidata item. It transcludes the Wikidata ma material and then links you to it, to the Commons category that way. And using the, uh, you can also um, use it with a couple of pipes and the second piped item has the text you want to use, so you can use it in that way. But the most efficient way to operate the whole system is just to put Commons Cat in line and Wikidata does the rest. And I think that's, that's really good. Here's another example, the co-ord template, which is used, for example, usually in an inbox to help you work out the coordinates of a fixed item such as a building or a river mouth or uh, a peak of a mountain and so on. Anything that has a geographical location that you can find using some reliable source can be entered into a co template and then used to create a link that will give you a link to a map and you can look at the place on the map. Now in 2009, if you use the form there, which uses degrees minutes and seconds, it would uh, insert a coordinate statement at the top of the article and the inbox, inbox that would link to online maps. That's the way it worked back then. 2023, you can still use it like that with your direct link or you can transclude the data from Wikidata. You don't need to put the data on the English Wikipedia page, you can just use Wikidata to do that job for you. Now, for a reason I'll, I'll explain in a moment, I think that latter use, that use, is a far superior way to run the whole system. Now, would anyone like to guess the object at that coordinate location? 250201 North, 121 East. Does anyone know what that is? Yes? Close. It's a building in Taipei, yes. Any other guesses? No? Taipei 101, tallest building in Taipei. A month ago, when I was preparing this presentation, there was no coord tag, no coordinate information about that building on the English Wikipedia article about it. So I decided to fix that problem. And I fixed it by using a form of the coord template that takes the information direct from Wikidata. As you can see, where you have the parameter for the, for the info box, it's the coordinates parameter, it starts with the co template, but instead of having the numbers, you've got format is degrees, minutes, seconds, region, Taiwan, Taipei, type of object, it's a landmark, there are various others it could be, river mouth for example, and display IT, that's inline or title, so it displays in the info box and also at the top of the article here. Now if you put it in that way, it then transcludes the coordinate location directly from the Wikidata item that relates to the subject of the page. That's the Wikidata item. And I'll now show you what the Wikidata item looks like. Same subject matter. So what you've got on the Wikidata item is the uh, coordinate location which has been entered directly into Wikidata and it shows up on a map and if you click on that link there, you can produce a full page size of the version and you can zoom in and out. It gives you the coordinates there with the seconds to two decimal places. And I've enhanced the information there by including a reference because I put that information in there within the last month. And what you do for referencing, the reference I almost always use, not always, but most of the time, is Google Maps. 
and I find that by using the geolocator tool. If you're used to geolocating things, you've probably heard of that tool. So you use geolocator and ge Google Maps to get the uh, information. You can put it in the digital version or in the degrees, minutes, seconds. You can do it to two decimal places. And then you reference it properly. You put the, the source and when it was, uh, when it was uh, retrieved, so that was the 3rd of October, earlier this month, and I might add that sometimes when you're checking this, you'll find that the information about geolocation is wrong. I've encountered that a few times. So it's actually a good idea for someone to go through and check all of these and check them on the map. Uh, so that's how you get it to be very precise, properly referenced. And then what happens with the English Wikipedia transclusion is that it'll transclude it, but it'll round it to the nearest second. It won't do it into the, the point two decimal places. And that way you'll get a geolocation that's precise enough for Wikipedia and a more precise geolocation that can be used as data all over the place, not just in Wikimedia projects but elsewhere, such as in uh, geolocating places that are on OpenStreetMap. So I think that's the most efficient and the best way to use the coord te template as it is today. Now, there are also some other templates on Wikipedia, English Wikipedia, that operate similarly. For example, with some info box templates, they will transclude a whole map for you. An example is info box museum. When I was on my way back from Wikimania Singapore a couple of months ago, I stopped over in Darwin, capital city of the Northern Territory, and I visited the Darwin Aviation Museum, largely to take photographs, which I'm going to include in the article in due course. I haven't uploaded them to Commons yet. But when I was looking at the article, I noticed something interesting about it. It had a very low quality locator map. The best map they had on Commons that could be used as a locator map for that museum was a map of the whole of the Northern Territory. Now, if you remember the map I showed you of the whole of Australia, the Northern Territory is very large. If you were to fly in a jet aircraft from the northern tip to the southern tip, in central Australia, it'd take you probably two hours or more. It's ginormous, as we say in English. And so having that map really doesn't tell you very much about the location of the museum. The most it really tells you is that it's in Darwin, because that's where Darwin is. The, the dot is where Darwin is. But of course, you know that it's in Darwin because it's called the Darwin Aviation Museum. So that map's essentially useless for locating the museum. But that's the map that's used if you put map information into the Wikipedia, English Wikipedia page. Well, I fixed that problem using the, using the template. I knew what the template would do if I took the information about the map out. So what I did was, in that info box, when you edit it, you just delete all the map information. And you end up with a situation where Wikidata says, right, there's no map information in that info box, so we'll transclude a map. And here's the transcluded map. What's the advantage of that? Well, it's an appropriate scale. As you can see, you now know from that Wikidata generated map that the museum is in the eastern suburbs of Darwin. It's not just in Darwin, you know that already. It's in the eastern suburbs. And it's the same sort of map that the one of, of uh, Taipei 101. If you click on that link there, it'll put, put it on, on a whole page size map. You can zoom in and out. You can even have it on your phone while you're looking for the museum, driving around in the car or sitting on the bus going out there on the bus. A far superior thing. And all I had to do to improve it in that way was to take the map information out of the info box. It's that simple. My view is that info box, box museum should always have the map information deleted because then Wikidata will supply the information by transclusion. A far superior method. There are some info boxes that will transclude literally everything from Wikidata. Here's an example. It's one of the very few examples. It's called Infobox Telescope. And it's a major project from a, an influential Wikimedia person whom I met uh, during the recent Wikimania in Singapore. His name is Mike Peel and he's a member of the International Board of Trustees of the Wikimedia Foundation. He's also a professional astronomer. He's worked in a number of different places with big telescopes, and I chose the article about the observatory you see there because that's one that he has a particular professional interest in. The info box, you can't see it on that illustration there, but the info box on that page is very simple. All it says is info box telescope. It doesn't have any other contents at all. 
And from that information only, Wikidata supplies the rest. All of the data in that info box, is including the image and the map, is transcluded from Wikidata. The whole box and dice. In my view, that's the best solution. All the data is on Wikidata. All of it is available to be transcluded to every other language Wikipedia. All of it can be used on OpenStreetMap or any other external resource that uses information sourced from Wikidata. It's all in the right place. It's all the most efficient. It's all the best. This is, in my view, the best solution. You get all your data, you put it on Wikidata, you can properly reference it all in the way that I demonstrated earlier with the coordinate information for Taipei 101. And that's the way I think it should operate in all cases. But here's the problem. Very few of the info boxes on English Wikipedia are set up like that. And Mike Peel told me there was a certain amount of resistance to it on English Wikipedia because there's uh, an attitude of editors that this is not the right thing to do. He found it quite difficult. Now, my research has indicated that only about 103 info box templates can use Wikidata directly, as is the case with Info Box Museum. Others can use it indirectly, or it, for example, in combination with the TL Wikidata template I showed you earlier, but only about 4,000 English Wikipedia articles have an info box populated completely from Wikidata, like the one on the previous slide. And yet there are about 6,750,000 English Wikipedia articles. So we're a long way from achieving what I think is the most efficient and the most sensible way to run Wikidata alongside English Wikipedia. There's a lot of work to be done. Here's another problem I've found quite recently. It's the short description template that you often find, and in fact nowadays usually find, at the top of a Wikipedia, an English Wikipedia article. It's used in particular to add a short description of an article that can be seen underneath links on Google and on smartphones. It gives you a short description of the article, that's literally what it does. Now if you don't include this template in an English Wikipedia article, Wikidata fills the void. It transcludes d directly and automatically the corresponding piece of data from the Wikidata item with the first letter of the word capitalised. It does that automatically. So far, so good. When I found out about this, I started in my new, newly created English Wikipedia articles of just leaving out that template altogether. It's superfluous. If you don't put it in there and there's a description in the Wikidata item, Wikidata will fix the void. But then I discovered a different problem, which is that if you do leave the template out, another English Wikipedia editor will likely come along a month or two later and either add a short description manually or use a tool called Wikipedia Short Disk Helper to put one in there. And I discovered this recently when I created a few articles about some East Timorese politicians who'd recently joined the East Timorese government and they were online for maybe a month, maybe two months, and then someone came along and added the superfluous template to it. I wasn't angry about that, but I was just a bit surprised. Then I did a li little bit more digging around. It's actually a very serious problem. This is the, uh, there's a special Wikipedia, wiki project short description on English Wikipedia. It's been set up to ensure that as many English Wikipedia articles have one of those templates on them. This is a template that, in my view, is completely unnecessary because if you don't put it there, you get your data directly from data. You don't need it. But as you can see from the uh, picture on the left-hand side, there are more than five million English Wikipedia articles with that template on it. And there's even the, uh, even the, the project, which is set up to delete all the red you can see there and replace it with more green. I think that's something that really needs to be addressed. So let's have some, some thoughts about why are there such problems on English Wikipedia? Why is it that you can see, in particular with the short descriptions template, that there's a real conflict between integrating the two projects in the way that's the most efficient and the most sensible and the way they're actually operating at the moment? And I think there are a number of explanations and I don't want to uh, give you the wrong impression that I'm severely criticising individuals or groups of people in any way. What I'm trying to do is develop and 
put to you my understanding as to why this has happened. Because we're, we're all part of a worldwide collaborative project and w we should, I think, look to make it as most efficient and to operate in the best way possible. Sometimes that doesn't happen for various reasons. If we think that something ought to be altered, a useful exercise to begin with is to try to figure out why it is how it is. The first problem is that many contributors to English Wikipedia are native speakers who are not very proficient, if they're proficient at all, in other languages. As I mentioned earlier, if you're my age and from Australia, Australian born, it is perfectly possible for you to have gone through 12 years of school education and spent not a single hour learning a foreign language. That's just the way it is. And that's not to criticise anyone who speaks only one language or to criticise anyone, it's just a reality. And if you are monolingual, you tend not to be as aware as someone who's multilingual of the benefits of the sort of creation that I've always appreciated about the Wikimedia project. To me, one of the best things about Wikimedia is that it enables the sharing of information across international and interlingual boundaries to share information available in one language with people who speak other languages. And an excellent way to help achieve this is to use Wikidata in the optimum way, but at the moment that's not happening because of the way there's a conflict between the general operations of Wikidata and the general operations of English Wikipedia. So that's one source of what I think is the problem. Another problem is that many of the editors of English Wikipedia think of themselves as Wikipedians rather than Wikimedians. I think it's desirable that we try to focus on the fact that Wikimedia runs a number of projects and they are all integrate with each other and it's best to try to make them work better and in the most harmonious way rather than focus on individual problems and ignore, uh, individual projects and ignoring the rest of them. Another problem is that many Wiki English Wikipedia editors are suspicious of Wikidata and believe in particular that its approach to data reliability is deficient. Now as I said before, not all of the data on Wikidata is reliable. Some of the information on coordinates that I've been looking at recently is just wrong. A lot of that information has actually been uh, picked up by Wikidata automatically from manually entered material from other places, particularly from Wikipedias. And I think a lot of it needs to be checked. But that doesn't mean that the general principle that you should transclude data from Wikidata instead of it entering locally shouldn't apply. The solution to the problem is properly to reference the data on Wikidata. And as I've demonstrated earlier on in this presentation, that's very, very easy. All you need, for example, to correct coordinates information is Google Maps and Geolocator, and you can do it yourself. And then you can properly reference it. And you can also set up transclusion software so that it will only transclude properly referenced data, that it will ignore the rest. An example of that is the Infobox telescope I referred to earlier. That will transclude data that is properly referenced and it just ignores the rest. So you can fix that problem. And that's something that many editors who are opposed to closer links between the two projects simply don't know anything about. So we move on to the question of, well, should we do anything at all about these problems? I think we should. At the moment, I think Wikidata is being underused because so much information is stored locally on English Wikipedia and is not stored on data and transcluded or is it's simply a duplicate of what's on data. Uh, I think Wikidata is often being misused. You have it there, you use it for some purposes but not for others when it can be used for all purposes. I think also that if English Wikipedia problems were addressed, that would also improve Wikidata. And addressing the problems would also assist other Wikipedias, such as Chinese Wikipedia or German Wikipedia, which can also transclude data directly from data, but cannot transclude it directly from English Wikipedia. And then, of course, there are the new projects and new developments, such as Abstract Wikipedia and Wikifunctions. Now, I don't really fully understand either of those projects, but I know enough about them to know that they're likely to be very beneficial and they're likely to work much better if we have a more efficient use of Wikidata and the links between Wikidata and the individual Wikipedias than if we have the problematic sort of links that we have at the moment. So here's how you could help, or my thoughts about you could help. 
The first thing you could do, if you're an, an editor of English Wikipedia, is join English Wikipedia's Wiki Project Wikidata. And the front page of that is on the left-hand side there. The extraordinary thing about that Wiki Project is that although it's a Wiki Project donated to a very important topic, it's currently believed to be semi-active, or so it says. Really surprising. You can also join a different language Wikipedia's Wiki Project Wikidata. For example, there's one in German Wikipedia. Or, if there isn't one in your language Wikipedia, for example, if your language is Chinese, you could involve yourself in setting up one. I think it would be very beneficial if most, if not all, of the major language Wikipedias had a Wiki Project like this one. And if your first language doesn't have one, I would urge you to involve yourself in creating one. Secondly, you should consider involving yourself in setting up a corresponding wiki project Wikipedia on Wikidata. Again, surprisingly, there isn't one at the moment. I think there should be one. And I think that the, that wiki project should collaborate closely with various wiki project Wikidata on various Wikipedias to improve the way they interact with each other. And of course, once you've joined a wiki project, whichever it is, be active in it. And of course, that doesn't mean that you should uh, devote attention that you should, would otherwise be devoted to working, but obviously we all have other time constraints and other uh, priorities, but I think improving the interaction between the various Wikipedias and Wikidata is very important. As for the problems with English Wikipedia specifically, I have some ideas about that too. First of all, consider yourself to be a Wikimedia volunteer, not just a Wikipedia editor. Take the broad view, and in particular the broad view about the benefits of having Wikipedia as a playground for people who like to write stories, and Wikidata as the place where we keep the data. That's the best way to arrange things in my view. So keep in mind the benefits of transclusion instead of duplication, the viewpoints of contributors to English Wikipedia, who, as I said earlier, are often monolingual or semi-monolingual, and the suspicions of Wikipedia editors who don't necessarily understand how you can resolve those problems, how you can uh, properly reference material that's stored in Wikidata uh, to make it accurate, how you can transclude, use transclusion software to exclude data that's not properly referenced. That's already being done. That problem's been identified and it can be addressed and is being addressed. I also think that you should aim to integrate Wikidata's practices with those of the other Wikipe the various Wikipedias. For example, a particular example is uh, the, the problem with uh, the short description template. I don't think there's any reason why the rules for short descriptions on English Wikipedia should be any different from the rules on Wiki Wikidata for English language short descriptions. They serve the same purpose, so they should be the same or roughly the same. And if they're not the same, it may well be possible to set up transclusion software to, to, to cater for the differences. As to specific suggestions about templates, we'll go back through briefly quickly through the list I looked at earlier. First of all, the Commons Cat inline, so the Commons Cat Commons category links. Just use the template in one of the forms I've indicated there on the right, and then you'll get the transclusion kicking in. That's the most efficient way to link your article to the Commons category. With coordinates, use the template only in the form I demonstrated for Taipei 101. Not only is the data stored in data, in Wikidata, and properly referenced, it's also transcluded in such a way that it's rounded to the nearest second. So you can have it very precise in Wikidata and not so precise in Wikipedia because you only need it not so precise. As for uh, info boxes like Infobox Museum, where the info boxes already transclude location maps, the simple way to improve the links between the two projects with those types of info boxes is to delete all the information from the maps on the Wikipedia info boxes and then it get, gets transcluded and it will be higher quality as I demonstrated with the, one, the article about the Darwin Aviation Museum. As for Wiki, 
wiki info boxes that already transclude lots of data, so for example the, the telef uh, telescope info box. Again, remove from the info box any existing parameters relating to transcludable data. Add that data, data directly to Wikidata. Sorry, I'm using the Australian pronunciation of data. It's a bit confusing if I do that. And then the info box will transclude properly referenced data from the statements in the Wikidata item to the English Wikipedia article. And so if you do that, you will have achieved more than one thing, positive thing, you will have improved the Wikidata item, you will have improved the way it's displayed on English Wikipedia, and you will have improved the links between the two projects. Um, some, more specific, some more specific suggestions. Uh, other info boxes sometimes already transclude some data. They don't always work properly though, and that's something I've identified and I'm looking at, and hopefully I'll be able to work on soon. Uh, ideally, they and info boxes that don't already transclude data should be amended to do so. And info boxes can and should be set up to work in conjunction with specific transclusion templates such as TL Wikidata. And as for the short description template, as I said earlier, I think this template's a real problem. And I think that there ought to be some more coordination between editors of the two projects to come up with some idea that's more efficient and, in my view, more settle, uh, sensible than the way it's operating at the moment. I think the way it's operating at the moment is very unfortunate. And now some final comments. This is sort of a rally the troops type exercise. Remember that Wikimedia projects are a cooperative e enterprise. Tying Wikipedia, Wikidata more closely to English Wikipedia would substantially improve both projects and also assist with other language Wikipedias. All Wikimedians who contribute to the improvement of such ties uh, can cooperate to that effect. And so my final word is let's cooperate. I'd like to thank you for listening. This photograph is of a pair of quokkas who are native to my home state of Western Australia. And the quokka was selected as the mascot for the ESIAP region of Wikimedia. I think Dodie's got the mascot at the moment, hasn't he, haven't you? For, for Malaysia next year? <laughs> oh, somebody's got it, but anyway, the quokkas. And I'd like also to give credit to Credit Stu. Thank you very much. And I think we have a little bit of time for questions. One, one or two questions, if anyone has any questions. Yes, Dodie has a question. Okay, um, talking about that Darwin Aviation Museum, I mean for museum yes. info box, <coughs> if, if you say the, 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 the map, map module, location map module is, is, is not s uh, specific enough compared to the uh, op open street map, then why we have that maps parameter inside the museum info box at the very beginning? Um, okay, it transcludes the Northern Territory map, but yeah. then isn't that it's uh, it's our task to create to create a location map module smaller, let's say like a Darwin City to to to, to add listing into that, and then secondly, um, okay, talking about museum um, um, info box, I have to say we need to have some flexibility here because some museum can be treated as museum or more towards like building or more towards yes. castle or more towards. A former power station um, because let's say like infobox building has more parameters on the floor who is the architect start of construction finish of construction in, in which I believe museum really need that information as well but then in infobox museum it doesn't exist even actually at the very beginning when I know about infobox um, there is a specified list of infobox already specified with some certain parameters so infobox of museum is different than infobox school it's different than Infobox University, why can't we have a blank Infobox with a user-specified parameter? Just same like a wiki data entry for any, yeah. any item that we have. And then for the short description, why everyone writes short description? Because that is re clearly written in the manual of style of lead section. So basically, mm. we have to write that because it's uh, many of us, you know, that's, that's the Bible of Wikipedia uh, <laughs> a a editing. We, we, we should follow that anything uh, dispute we are getting to that. Then let's discuss to change that manual of style first before that change. Don't blame the editor that oh, follows no, no, the I don't manual do that. of style. Yeah, yeah. I'll, perhaps of. I'll deal with your, your, it's basically you've asked me three questions, I'll deal with them in order. First of all, no, okay. 
uh, your question about the maps, that's the, uh, the best map is that's available for the Northern Territory, which admittedly is an unusual place. There probably should be a map, a locator map of Darwin in Commons, but there isn't, so that's the best one that's available. And I agree that that's a possible solution. But in my view, it's not as good a solution as this one, which is the Wikidata map. That's because you can click on that link there and you'll get a full page map that you can then use to zoom in and out. It's an open street map, transcluded map, and that's a much, much better map than any map you could get from Wikimedia Commons because that's just a fixed map that, that won't zoom in and out. So that's, that's, my, that's my view why it's better to do it on the, that way than, than by getting a, a map of Darwin instead. Uh, your second one was about, I think it was about the lack of parameters in museum. I, uh, yeah, I think the solution to that is, as was used for Infobox Telescope, that you store the basic data such as the, uh, the, the, the name of the director or the date of inception and so on, on data, and then just transclude it into the info box. The way you do that is by amending the info box so it operates similarly to info box telescope. And as for short description, yes, I agree that the way to solve what I uh, identify as a problem is to rewrite the Bible. And to rewrite the Bible is a huge job. <laughs> it's not, it's not, again, I'm, I'm not, I, I want to emphasise I'm not criticising any individuals or groups of individuals. It's a problem that's just arisen over time. And it's reached a point now where I think there ought to be some cooperation to address it because I don't see any reason why you should keep short descriptions on English Wikipedia that in many, many cases will just be a duplicate on, on, of what's on data. And if you, if you need the descriptions at all, you can keep them all. They're basically data. You can keep them all on Wikidata and just transclude them. And then once they're there, you've got an English language version of them on data. It's much easier for people using other languages, Chinese, German, Malaysia, Malay or Indonesian or any language, to find them there on data and just translate them there rather than search through all the Wikipedias for them. It's all in the one spot. So I, I agree with you. It's a big job to, to rewrite the Bible. And I, I acknowledge that, but I think it's, it's something that we ought to be doing. Uh, it might take a while, but I think it would be benefit for, for the whole system. Uh, and that's why I'm suggesting it. Any other questions? <laughs>